A man has been shot dead by police in an attack at London Bridge. The Metro Police has declared the stabbing attack a terrorist incident. Two of the victims have died. While in an almost identical incident in the Netherlands, at least three people have been stabbed in an attack at a departmental store in a busy shopping street in The Hague. Police are searching for a man aged between 45 and 50 wearing a grey jogging tracksuit who they believe may be behind the attack. Let's get a wrap up of the international news. Juliana Olayenka is standing with, by with her around the world in five. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom in London. British armed police have shot and killed a terror suspect after several people were stabbed on London Bridge. In a video filmed by witnesses, members of the public were seen tackling the man to the ground and a knife was taken from his possession. This is the moment police moved in. The video has been paused before the moment of his death. <coughs> police say the suspect had a device strapped to his body. They now believe he was carrying hoax explosives. A male suspect was shot by specialist armed officers from the City of London Police and I can confirm that this suspect died at the scene. A number of other people received injuries during this incident. As soon as we can provide further updates on their condition, we will. Due to reports that the suspect may have had an explosive device, specialist officers also attended the scene and wide cordons are in place to ensure there remains no further danger to the public. However, I can confirm at this time, we believe a device that was strapped to the body of the suspect is a hoax explosive device. I am deeply saddened and angered that our city of London has again been targeted by terrorism. It is with the heaviest of hearts that I have to inform you that, as well as the suspect who was shot dead by police, two of those injured in this attack in the London Bridge area have tragically lost their lives. Terrorism is cowardly and evil. We must and we will stand united and resolute in the face of terror. Those who seek to attack us and divide us will never succeed. I also want to pay tribute to the extraordinary bravery of those members of the public who physically intervened uh, to protect the lives of others. And uh, for me, they represent the very best of our country. And I thank them. I can assure you and assure everyone that anybody involved in this crime, in these attacks, uh, will be hunted down and will be brought to justice. And I think the message that we send to them and anyone associated uh, with this type of attack is one that will be familiar. And that is that this country will never be cowed or divided or intimidated. After almost two months of deadly anti-government demonstrations, Iraq's Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi has announced he's resigning. The sudden turnaround comes a day after more than 40 people were killed by security forces. Thursday's bloodshed was one of the most violent since the uprising began at the start of October. There have been more clashes in the southern city of Nasiriyah. The United Nations says it's deeply disturbed by the use of force. Abdul Mahdi's decision was delivered on state television just hours after the country's top Shia cleric condemned the violence and called for a new government. He says he'll present his resignation to Parliament, which is due to convene on Sunday. President Donald Trump is back in Florida after his surprise Thanksgiving visit to Afghanistan. During his first trip to the country, he spent more than two hours at Bagram Airfield with US troops, sitting with them for a meal and thanking them for their service. He also announced peace talks with the Taliban have restarted. The Taliban wants to make a deal. We'll see if they want to make a deal. It's got to be a real deal, but we'll see. Police in Hong Kong say almost 4,000 petrol bombs have been recovered from the Polytechnic University campus. The site was the centre of fiery scenes earlier this month as protesters barricaded themselves inside and clashed with police. Hundreds of officers have been collecting evidence over the past two days. They say more than 1,300 pressurised flammable liquids and over 500 weapons were also found. The campus was left in ruins and covered in bricks, glass fragments and debris. No one single building or even one single floor was spared from the damage. Sudan has repealed a public order law that controlled how women acted and dressed in public. Imposing conservative Islamic codes, it was enforced during Omar al-Bashir's rule. Those who broke the law could be punished by flogging. 
On Twitter, Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok paid tribute to women who have endured the atrocities that resulted from the implementation of this law. The country's transitional authorities also approved legislation to dissolve Bashir's National Congress Party and seize its assets. The Justice Minister says it's a measure to dismantle the former regime. And finally, outgoing European Council President Donald Tusk symbolically handed over a bell to his successor. I give this holy scepter into your hands. The tiny instrument is used to declare European leaders' meetings open. Formerly the Prime Minister of Belgium, Charles Michel officially takes over the role on Sunday. I am humbled to be the next President of the European Council. It is a great responsibility and a great honour. And that's your international news around the world in five. Welcome to Sports News. Players and coaching crew of the Nigeria Professional Football League side FC Fangyuba have been attacked by armed robbers on their way to an NPFL match day six clash against Jigawa Golden Stars. According to a statement released by the Anambra Warriors, the incident happened at Kaba Junction near Lokoja in Kogi State at about 1.30 p.m. when the team bus ran into a group of armed robbers dressed in NYSC uniforms. The club also says the driver was shot while some members of the coaching crew and players were critically injured. The team are currently ranked 10th on the NPFL log with eight points from five league games. Over in England, Tottenham Hotspur manager Jose Mourinho has expressed his sympathy with former Arsenal manager Unai Emery, who was sacked by the club earlier today. He is confident the Spaniard will be back before long. He, however, refused to speculate whether he would have considered the Arsenal job had the opportunity arisen first insisting he wouldn't swap Spurs for any other club in the world. Meanwhile, Manchester City manager Pep Guardiola also feels sorry for Unai Emery after the manager was sacked by Arsenal, calling him an incredible professional and predicting that he'll soon find a new job. From soccer to table tennis now, Nigeria's Aruna Quadri has made a good start to his ITTF Men's World Cup campaign in China after booking his place in the round of 16. Quadri defeated Heming Hu in straight games 11-6, 11-7, 11-4, 11-6 after a stunning show of his speed of play in a match lasting just 26 minutes. However, he lost to Carlson Christian 12-10. 11-7, 11-8, 11-9 in his second group game. He'll face Harimoto Tomokazu of Japan in the round of 16 tomorrow. That's it on Sports News. I'm Charles Eruka and it's back to Gimba with the rest of the news at 10. Now, sequel to Bolanle, Austin Peters musical on Fela and the Calcutta Queens. It's about to hit the stage in Lagos. Akaiti Afia has details and other stories. Here are your entertainment stories. A new robust and energetic story focusing on the life of the legendary Afrobeat king Fela Kuti has been unveiled in Lagos. Fela's Republic, a musical, was announced at a media briefing in Lagos. Fela. Fela's Republic, a sequel to Fela and the Calicutta Queens, which toured last year. The earlier version had been staged in Lagos, Abuja, Cairo, and Pretoria with critical success. <laughs> Meanwhile, actress Toyin Abraham has announced plans to release the fourth installment of her comic movie, Fates of the Alakada, the Party Planner. She took to her social media to announce the news and also hinted that the internet comic sensation Brada Shaggy will be featured in the sequel, which will be in cinemas next year. And that's it for entertainment news. I'm Akaita Afia. The News at 10 continues shortly. And the main news again, the South African court today convicted a police constable, Austin Reynolds, for the murder of a Nigerian, Ibuka Okoli, in Durban, KwaZulu Natal. Last year, the convict's mother has apologized to Ebuka's family. 
And the Metropolitan Police today shot dead a suspect who killed two people in a multiple stabbing incident on the London Bridge. While in the Netherlands, police are searching for a suspect who stabbed three people in The Hague. And that's how it's been on the news at 10 tonight. I want to thank you so much indeed for watching. As Mark Webb puts it, it's Friday. Enjoy it. Good night.